Hey, what's going on YouTube? So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Authentic and integrating it with my uh, Caddy reverse proxy. So Authentic is an open source identity provider uh, designed for user authentication, single sign on, as well as access control. It supports a wide range of protocols like SAML2, OAuth2, making it compatible with a wide range of applications and services. So I walk you through setting up Authentic using Docker Compose and demonstrate how to seamlessly integrate it with the Caddy reverse proxy to enable smooth authentication for your web services. And then lastly, I'll show you briefly how to set up notifications using the Notify service as well. All right, so let's start off with the compose.yaml file. So there is official documentation for configuring Authentic, which is what I use when setting up my Authentic service. And I'll place that link in the description below. So for the Compose files, there are four services being, uh, being created. So you have the Postgres SQL, the Redis server, and Worker. So, and I'll briefly go over each, each service. So the Postgres serves as the database backend for Authentic where all configuration and operational data is being stored. Then you have the Redis service, which acts as an in-memory data store message uh, broker for Authentic handling tasks such as caching and queuing. Next, you have the server, which acts as which runs the main authentic server, uh, providing that core functionality as well as the web interface. And then you have the worker, which handles background tasks for authentic, such as processing jobs and managing integrations, pushing out notifications. So some things to note in the network sections, the authentic network serves as the internal communication channel between the services while the caddy network as seen under the server uh, handles external connectivity to the caddy uh, reverse proxy and then something specific for the worker we have the notify network and that is for um, the notify notification integration that i will be showing uh, later on in the video um, just to note, my, my Notify service is also using the Notify network. So before we start the container, we need to run the following commands to generate the Postgres password and authentic secret key to store it in the .env file. So we're going to run this command, these two commands, and it will create the information we need in the .env file. I also want to show you how I have Authentic configured within my caddy file. So looking at this block of code, the forward auth specifies Authentic as the authentication header. The headers define which headers from Authentic responses, like the X Authentic, uh, should be passed along the request chain. So this block of code encapsulating this into the authentic block um, allows you to apply it across multiple sites or routes within the same caddy file without duplicating this configuration. Um, and that is using the term import as seen under my photo prism configuration right here, where it says import authentic. That is just importing the code at the top to apply to this uh, this route right here. I've also configured the authentic web interface with the reverse proxy pointing to the container name as well as the port running within the container. Um, just keep in mind I have already updated my DNS record as well pointing to authentic.test.geniehome.net. Now we can start the container by running the command sudo docker compose up dash d.
And as you can see, the volumes were created. All right, so now that we have the container up and running, the next thing you want to do is go to this URL, um, the initial setup URL. And from here, we can set the email and password for the admin user, aka admin. So I'm going to set an e uh, email, create a password, and click continue. So once logged in, you can go to settings and you can uh, update your username if you want. For this tutorial, I'm just going to leave the username as it is. So you can also enroll a multi-factor device if you want. For me, I have a Vault Water instance that I want to enroll as my MFA device. So you'll click on MFA devices, enroll, web Authent device. From here, you have a pop-up. Um, this is specific on what hardware you're using, but for me, my Vault Water and extension on my web browser pops up. And I already have a login saved for Authentic. So I'll just click on that. I'll click on yes to overwrite the original pass key. And that should be it. We have created a WebAuthn multi factor device for Vault Warden for my Vault Warden instance. So now I can test this out by signing out. So if I sign back in, I should be prompted for my pass key as well. And I am authenticated. So now that we have our user configured the way that we want, and we have MF Day authenticated, now we can um, we can try to access Photo real quick, Photo Prism, see if it works. And as you can see, I received a not found error, and that is because we haven't configured an application within Authentic for Photo Prism yet. So there's multiple ways you can do this. But I found this to be the easiest way and most straightforward by just clicking create a new application. You'll give it a name. In this case, I'll name it Photo Prism. And you can review, review the rest of the settings. But for this, this is all you need to do is give it a name. The slug will, will be the same as the name. You click Next. Now you will select the provider type. And as you can see, authentic offers a wide variety of providers to choose from. For this tutorial, we're going to select proxy provider and click next. For the authorization flow, you can select whether you want implicit or explicit consent, which just means a pop-up window will come up after authenticating to ask whether you want authorization to the service. So I'll select explicit to show you how that looks. Next, for the you want to select the forward off single application. And then for external host, you want to type in the URL for Photo Prism. And then you can select how long you want the ticket, the token to last for authentication. And then you can review the rest of the settings if you want. But for this tutorial, this is all you need to configure. You click Next. And this is where you can bind user group policies to the application to apply some access controls. Uh, we don't have any configures. You can just click through this. And then last thing, you can review your settings. And if you're OK with it, you will click Submit. All right, you can exit out of this. And now you see we have an application created. The next step will be to apply that app, this application into an outpost. So you can think of an outpost as a standalone deployment that connects to the Authentic API that handles tasks like authentication and authorization for your applications. Uh, so when navigating to outposts, if you see this warning, uh, which is common, you can click on Edit. Then go down to Advanced Settings. And then for your authentication host, you'll want to add your authentic URL here. And you'll click Update. And that should fix that problem. As you can see, the error went away.
So now we can click on edit again. And then under available applications, you'll want, you should see the photo prism that we created. You're going to select it and then you're going to click on the single arrow to move it over to the selected applications. And now you just click update. Before we test this out, I also want to go over the notify integration real quick. Um, this allows you to integrate a webhook notification service um, into this setup to receive notifications whenever someone authenticates. So for this, you want to go down to events and then notification transport. From here, you will click on create. You will give it a name. I'll just name it Notify. And we're going to select the generic webhook. For under my notification instance, I've already created a new user name authentic. And I've also created a token for that user as well. And then I've also created the authentic alerts topic as well. And you can watch my, vi my previous video on how to do that. Um, but for the webhook, the URL webhook, I'm going to put down um, this right here, which will be notify HTTP notify, which is actually the name of my notify container. Then you have the topic name, which is authentic alerts. And then the all parameter, parameter, which is the token that I've created for the authentic users I've created within my notify instance. Again, please watch my previous video on how this is set up. For here, you want to create. So I do have my Notify website opened in my browser with Authentic Alert subscribed to. So what I can do now is just test to see to make sure that this notification is in fact working. And if I go back, I don't know if you heard the notification, but as you can see, I did receive one right here. The test notification did work. All right, so next we're going to want to create notification rules. So we'll go over to notification rules and we'll click create. For the name, we're just going to name it login. For group, we're going to select the admins, authentic admins group, the same group that our user is a part of. And then for transport, we're going to select notify the one that we created, and we're going to click the single arrow to move it over to select the transports. And then we're going to click create. From here, you want to click on the drop down arrow for the one that we created. And you're going to select, click on the create and bind policy. For here, you want to click the event matcher policy click next you want to give it a name for here we're just going to name it login again and then for policy specific settings for the action we're going to select login and click next under policy we're going to select the login and we're going to click finish and that should be it so now we can do some tests to see if we can access Photo Prism. So what we're going to do is we're going to log out. And then we're going to go back to the Photo Prism website and we're going to refresh it. OK, great. Now we see it says log in to continue to Photo Prism. From here, we're going to enter in our username. We're going to enter in our password. We're going to select the pass key that we created. And as you can see here, since we selected the explicit consent page that we uh, configured earlier, I'll select continue without the explicitly give it consent. And now we have access to Photo Prism. We also did receive a notification right here that uh, we have successful lo successfully logged in. And there you have it, a complete walkthrough on how to set up Authentic. 
as a forward auth provider. And there's so much more you can do with Authentic as well. Uh, please look over the official documentation for more example on how to use Authentic. If you found this video helpful, uh, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more tech tips and tutorials. If you have questions or want to set, share your own setup experience, please drop a comment below. I love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Until next time.